What is up guys? So today I'm going to give you guys an update on my long range testing setups. Now I have more than one setup currently being built and a couple that are finished and have taken out for a maiden which didn't go so well. So let's explain this one. So I was debating to set up the nano tal if you've been watching my channel the zod nano talent to be set up as my long range testing setup and it's still going to be however i decided to build the s800 two days ago and i've been building it a good six hours a day on this it was insane so let's take a look in here so what i've set up inside is the maytech f411 and as you can tell it's super clean it's really really nice how it came out i'm really satisfied really happy with it now, a lot of people were telling me that the USB is very fragile, so I've been very, very extra careful with it so I don't break it. So yeah, just take that into consideration when you're getting this. Now, I did, I had it double-sided tape, but then now after I took it out for a couple maiden, I decided to super glue the bottom PCB, which is really nice. I didn't super glue the whole thing, just the bottom PCB. So if I needed to remove it, I could just undo the screws and I can pop it out. Also, I decided to put the servo headers for the servos so I can keep it uh, very modular. If I needed to work on something, I could easily just remove them, so that was really nice. However, the VTX camera are soldered directly. Now, about the S800 here. Now, this is the PNP version. It comes... I had to build everything. I mean, I mean, plug and play my ass, basically. But anyways, um, the motor that it came with, it burned on the first Maiden. So, I had to drive back to the shop and replace it. And I replaced it. It came with a 2205-2300 KV shitty motor. And uh, what I decided to do, because at, in the beginning also, I didn't use this exact ESC they were providing. They are providing a fly color 30 amp, tiny, tiny little ESC. So instead, what I used was a 45 amp Sunny Sky R45 D-Shot 600. But when I tested it, it tested so beautifully clean that I decided to put it on. But maybe the motor couldn't handle that much current, especially on the iNav Auto Launch, because it immediately just pushes the throttle. And I think it really gave it like like a bunch of amperage and I think that's why it burned or it was just a piece of shit one of those two uh, so when I came back I did T-Motor actually provided me with their new F80 Pros the other day which was really nice of them they gave me five F80 Pros 1900 and 2500 KV so I decided to use one of the 1900 KVs because I wanted this to be long endurance uh, flights now, as you can tell here, there's the GPS. I did a little cutout and I super glued it in. Uh, this was provided, I think, by Maytech. There's one I purchased and one was by Maytech. I think, no, this is the one I purchased. The one on the hexacopter, which I'll show you right now for long range testing also, is the one that was provided by Maytech. This one has a, uh, uh, what is it called, a compass in it, but it turns out that, you know, flying wings don't really need compasses. But, oh well, it was already in there. I can't do anything about it. Now, as you can tell here, I've also 3D, 3D did not design, 3D printed this cover here because my batteries are a bit too big because I'm using 4S LiPos. And this works just great. And it does have the magnets, but this is the second top. So expect to break them, which is really nice. I'm printing a couple, so whenever I break them, it's fine. Also, for receiver, what I'm using is the R9 uh, Slim. So I'm using the R9M module on my Horus, which is FR Sky. And uh, I removed, it comes with two antennas. I removed one of the antennas and I only kept one antenna because I want to see how well that performs because I know the TBS Crossfire is doing really, really well. And there's going to be a nice long range shootout between those two. It's going to be really nice. So uh, I do have a nice setup for it. So I did have a couple fail safes, but I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt currently just under two conditions. One, that I only have one antenna, but that shouldn't be a real issue. Two, it wasn't as clean as this when I first took it out for a maiden. I came back and I cleaned it up. As you can tell, I added a 1000 microfarad Panasonic low ESR capacitor because this flight controller has uh, two ESC outputs, as you can tell here. So I just used one of them. And I just stuck it with hot glue so it doesn't play and hit the flight controller and make it vibrate or just do anything stupid in flight. Also, for camera, what I'm using is the HS1177XAT600M from Fox Seer, which I really like. And it fits perfect. And I decided to cut out this little extra foam piece just to cover it up and uh, just to keep the overall lifespan maybe a little bit better, hopefully. Uh, for antenna, I'm using this GetBarC that came with the GetBarC Elegant. Uh, I'm going to be doing antenna testing, but this is the one I had just laying around, so I just stuck it on there. However, what I've noticed is the Lollipop uh, antenna from Fox here is absolutely remarkable, but that's still you know in the early stages of me saying it, so just wait a little bit on that, and I'll be testing that for sure. So I'm going to be doing antenna testing and VTX testing. And currently I have a new VTX installed here that just came out from Eosheen. I forgot which one it is. I'll have a link down below. It goes up to 800 milliwatts. It's selectable and it has smart audio, which is really nice. I haven't tested a smart audio, but um, yeah, this is going to be our first test for it here. Because this one is going to be also, it takes two, basically two VTXs for some reason. On this side, I'm going to have the Furious FPV 2.4 gigahertz setup. 
so I can test the 5.8 gigahertz VTXs and antennas without affecting my video feed. Uh, so I can fly farther and see how you know how how good each VTX is at whatever 200 milliwatts, 500 milliwatts. See how far we can go with them. So this is going to be really interesting here. And also I'm going to be doing receiver testing. And we do have a GPS which will tell us how far we've traveled and uh, all that kind of information, RSSI. And I will be setting up a little smaller stack, maybe a 20 by 20 flight controller with a DVR and uh, another receiver connected to it. Now I'm using R9M and Crossfire, so it's running a 900 megahertz, so I'm not gonna be affected by anything on board. But the reason why I wanna do that is so we can actually see the, the, the RSSI reading throughout the flight while piping the data from the GPS, which I think is gonna be pretty interesting also. So I do have a lot of nice tests coming up that I want to be absolutely perfect and with real nice data to show instead of, oh yeah, I just flew there, that's one kilometer. No, there's gonna be all kinds of information relaying back to us from. So also for HD camera, I've been using the Firefly 8S and 8SE, whatever one's charged are both exactly like one that has a touch screen, one just doesn't have a touch screen. So it's a really good camera. A 1080p 60 frames a second is beautiful on it. I did try the uh, 1080p uh, slow-mo, it was really nice. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I don't know what to use it for, but it's, it's, it's kind of nice. I mean, it's nice. That's all I can really say about it. So overall, this build took actually two days or even more. It took about five hours to six hours a day to prepare it with iNav and everything. The mixer is an absolute nightmare. And as you can tell here, I also 3D printed this antenna. Actually, it doesn't come this size. It actually comes like this from Thingiverse. And I was already using plastic tubes here for the antenna to protect it. I said, well, I thought this was going to fit those kind of and have it sticking out, but that wasn't the case. So I said, you know what, maybe I think 250 will be perfect, but it was a little bit too much, but I was really satisfied with 250 uh, scale. I increased the scale by 250 and it came out really nice. And I just stuck the antennas through, cut this plastic piece, put one side, one side, so just a little super glue here, a little super glue here. The antennas are not glued at all and a little super glue here. And then the wire is routed. If you take a look to the R9M. I put, I just use a knife and then I just, uh, it's going to be the field see, and I just put it in like that, as you can tell here, just in there. So it doesn't clip this or nothing scratches it because these can sometimes come kind of rough and I don't want them to cut out the, uh, to cut the wire or the antenna in any sort of way. Also, for the way that I set up the VTX, sometimes because I end up do working quite a lot on iNav with the battery connected and that was the Hawkeye. Uh, what I decided to do is use JST right here, so JST connectors. Um, just, you know, I just thought it would be a little bit easier, so if I'm working on it for a really long time, because it's a pain to get in there. Another thing about this ace 800, why the hell did they give us carbon fiber plates on the most sensitive parts? Like, this is where the ASC would go. Why the hell would they give us carbon fiber plates? You know, the two phases touch, you burned it. So I have it wrapped with uh, electrical tape, and I'm going to 3D print something for here. And also same thing goes for the VTX, they give you carbon fiber, so I put a little tape just to kind of keep it isolated uh, or insulated so it doesn't, you know, cause a short, but this is not really good for uh, heat dissipation. So that's something that I really didn't like. And um, well, this is currently it for one of my long range testing setups. The other one's going to have, it's going to be the Nano Talon with the F405 wing. But I'm actually thinking of getting an F411 wing because this is probably a bit too much for that. Uh, but it's also really nice. It has a lot of crazy features. But again, I think it's a bit too much for that. And I want to keep this maybe for something a little bit more special. So we're going to see. I'm going to see what I'm going to do in that perspective. So I'll do have the Zod Nano Talon and the S800 for long range testing. And eventually I'll have more things. And I also do have a large hexacopter. Hopefully it'll get good flight time to enable me to do some long range testing on. And you'll see that in the upcoming videos. But overall, this is just a quick update. This is what I've been working on. And um, it's, it's coming together. But building a wing is a lot more time consuming than, um, than a quadcopter. I mean, in my opinion, quadcopter is just... It's, I, it's, I, it's, I remember my first quadcopter build is a lot easier than this, to be honest. Uh, so, yeah, but overall, it came out nice. These things take a really nice beating, which I really love. And um, they're just really relaxing, you know, it's really fun to fly. And, well, that's going to include it for this video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll have a link to everything down below, especially that new VTX from Ishii. It's really good priced. And um, I did pick up a bunch of receivers for testing and range testing and, and transmitter range testing and also module range testing. So that's going to be really fun. It's something to be expected on the channel. 
And, well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.